Hey guys, what's up? Fan here again, and today I'm bringing you guys another video. Um, and today I'm going to be covering the talent tree of another mage. This one's going to be Nazebo. Um, so the, the build that we're going to be talking about today is the Q build Nazebo. Q build is pretty much unanimously seen across all regions as the most competitive, competitively like viable build and the strongest build overall. Um, so we're going to be talking about that build today and talking over talent choices and why we pick the talents and why we don't pick other ones, stuff like that. So without further ado, let's begin. Um, so level one, you're gonna take most most likely Widowmaker's uh, very strong talent, um, increases your Q's damage by approximately 30%. Um, at, and it's very easy to stack after Corpse Spiders attack heroes 100 times. Corpse Spiders attack very, very rapidly, and there's a lot of them, so very easy to stack this if you get like 10 Qs on heroes, maybe even less, um, some, somewhere around that range, you'll, you'll basically have this completed. So um, I expect an Azebo to finish this quest in around two minutes, two, two to four minutes uh, in that marker, so basically early game. And it'll the effect will stick with you throughout the rest of the game, so it has a lot of value there. Um, the only other option that people really get on this talent tier is Thing of the Deep. Thing of the Deep makes your cast range farther. Obviously good if, uh, primarily for farther zombie walls. Like farther cast range on CC is always a good thing um, that you get better CC off. Um, the other thing would be you can cast all your spells from farther back, so you, you're, you're safer essentially. Um, uh, you know, as a backliner, casting from farther back or auto attacking from farther back, those talents make you safer because you're farther away from your enemies. And, um, you know, those are good reasons to pick this. However, I think Zebo is actually one of the tankiest backline kind of heroes um, because of some of the talents that he gets, um, specifically level 4 and level 13. He gets very defensive talents at those tiers. Um, and also because of his passive, which gives him four permanent HP and one mana every single time he kills anything with his, uh, you know, poison on it, his passive on it. So over time, that scales immensely, and it generally makes him one of the tankiest backline heroes in terms of HP values um, that that you can have, really. And because of that, I would say that Widowmakers is going to be most often the best choice because you don't need that extra range. You don't need to be super safe um, because you're already pretty darn hard to kill. You're already one of the hardest backliners to kill uh, between your abilities and the tankiness that you get as the game goes on. Um, so most people should spec towards damage. Now, level four, most common, we get Corp Spider, I believe, across really all regions, and um, or at least in Korea especially, I believe they all go Corp Spider. I've never seen anyone not go Corp Spider. Um, I think in Europe there are some cases, in Europe and NA there are some cases of Big Voodoo. I think the first time I saw Big Voodoo taken was with My Insanity, who are now Team Liquid. Hasu Obs uh, really likes this talent, I believe, and basically... Uh, you know, this talent just increases the passive bonus by 100%. So instead of 4 HP and 1 mana for every minion, you get 8 HP and 2 mana uh, permanent for every minion that you kill with the passive or just anything you kill with the passive. Um, so what's the difference between these two? Well, this one's sustained. This one is more just max HP values and basically what that means is if the enemy team has a composition that's geared towards bursting you down they have like for example chain stuns and lots of burst damage I say like ETC Malfurion Jaina or ETC Malfurion Kel'Thas you know like they're just gonna stun 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 and you're gonna be dead by the end of those stuns um, if they have that kind of composition uh, big voodoo is really helpful because increasing your max HP makes it so it's harder to 100 OU um, However, if they have more of a sustained damage kind of composition, they're running some Gul'dan, they're running some Vala, some Lunara, sustained damage type heroes, um, then Hexcrawler is generally uh, the better option by far. And I just wanted to show you guys real fast here. Well, sure, let's just do it at level 10. I uh, just wanted to show you guys kind of the comparison real fast here, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lose some HP real fast 
to make it easier for you guys to kind of visualize this. Okay, we have a Malfurion bot who wants to heal us. Go away, Malfurion bot, please stop. I don't want to be healed. Alright, so our HP at value is about 550 right now, so I'm just going to throw the spider at level 10. 650, 750, 850, 950. Okay, so we, we gained about 400 HP there, right? From 550 to 950 at level 10 here. Um, about 400 HP gain per per spider throw, uh, you can expect that to be a little bit less because p uh, actual targets run away so the spiders don't hit them as much and sometimes they juke behind walls or minions and stuff and you lose value that way. But generally you can expect like, I don't know, somewhere between half that value to full value, so maybe like two to 400 HP gain and mana gain um, every time you throw your spiders. And that's pretty significant because 400 HP gain at level 10 is actually a pretty big deal, you know, like that's, that's one um, about one fifth of your HP, really, right? So, pretty significant deal there um, to get like a, approximately twenty percent of your HP back every single time, or ten to twenty percent of your HP back every time you throw a spider. It's very good. Um, it heavily outscales Big Voodoo in bigger team fights because, so give you some numbers for Big Voodoo at a hundred and fifty stacks, which you should have by approximately level thirteen to sixteen if you're doing well. Um, I'll just say 13 to 20, maybe sometimes you're not doing well. Um, big Voodoo at 150 stacks, um, you know, so you get 8 HP for each stack, right? Or, or you get 4 additional HP for each stack, let's say, let's put it that way. So that'd be 4 times 150, which would just be, let's see, 400, 600, 600 extra HP. So. At 150 stacks, which is usually towards the later part of the game, you only get 600 maximum HP back, right? Um, compared to Hexcrawler, um, keep in mind Hexcrawler is percentage HP, so as you get more HP, that 400 number, that 2 to 400 number goes up in value. Um, so really, you can actually expect that to I would say double in value by the time you have 150 stacks. Generally, you'll have around at least um, 4.5k HP, somewhere in that value, I'd say, maybe 4 to 4.5k HP. So, you know, just comparing the numbers, at 150 stacks, you'll get approximately uh, 600 extra life total with Big Voodoo, but your Hex Crawler is going to be to probably restoring you um, somewhere around, like, let's just say, three to 600 life per Hex Crawler that you throw out, per spider that you throw out. Um, so you can see that, like just basic math, that if you throw out two spiders that hit someone in the course of a fight, then Hexcrawler is just much, much better in terms of overall sustain than Big Voodoo. Um, so I do believe that Hexcrawler overall is a better choice. I think that, um, you know, that's why most people take it. It is better overall unless the situation is where you're getting bursted. You know, if, if the 600 max HP, 800 max HP, whatever it is, is the difference that you need, it's the difference between staying alive and dying, then Big Voodoo obviously is going to be better. But otherwise, just go for Hex Crawler. It's, uh, the num number comparison-wise, it's a lot more value if you're not in risk of dying. A lot more value. So, yep, of course, those calculations are assuming you get Spirit of... Uh, Racker or something, um, you know, the two extra spiders if you hit a single target here. This talent is very, very strong, you know. You can think of it as you get three spiders uh, normally. If you get two additional spiders, that is basically a 66% increase in damage um, and a 66% increase in damage when you're teching for all spiders is very good because it scales with the 30% attack damage at level one. And it's, uh, you know that's 66% more healing for level four as well if you take hex crawlers. Um, so overall very good. And keep in mind that this restores mana as well. So you get not only like two to 400 life or uh, you get two to 400 mana back as well, right? So um, yeah, overall I believe hex crawler is a better choice, but big voodoo is a interesting and viable tech when you need it. Level 10, we're just going to go Gargantuan, I believe. Most people just go Garg. Not a whole lot to talk about here. Garg does a ton of damage. It's really, really freaking tanky, really hard to kill. Zone controls really well. Rav just doesn't do quite enough damage anymore, and it it needs you to channel it. And it has a longer cooldown, so just Gargantuan almost all the time here. 
All right, so moving on. So at level 13, um, Choose a talent. Choose a talent. at level 13 here, we're going to go either superstition or ice block. Um, so if the enemy team has a all magic damage comp, this is one of the like reasons and the Zebo is super strong right now because magic damage is very popular. So let's say they have like a Falstad and a Kelthos or a Falstad and a Gul'dan as their backliners and they have a Ragnaros or a Valera as their melee assassin and then they have a tank and a healer. So for compositions like those that is primarily magic damage, and superstition completely com uh, obliterates those types of compositions, because it basically it makes you twice as tanky. Like it's permanent spell shield. Um, so when your enemies are primarily magic damage, like the composition that I just gave gave out to you guys, which is pretty common by the way, uh, it's not that uncommon. Superstition just makes Nazebo basically impossible to kill. Like you can think of it as doubling your life or just having permanent spell shield, whatever. It just makes you impossible to kill. Um, another thing about superstition is that even if they do have like some form of auto attack damage, it's not necessarily bad to take it. Um, so there's a difference between auto attack damage that can dive you as an azebo and auto attack damage that can't. So auto attack damage that can dive you would include things like Muradins that take give them the axe or something, you know, um, and jump on you and just start whacking you. Um, Gray main can obviously be really good at tracer, good at diving you. Um, auto attack damage that can't dive you include things that. I would classify as maybe like Vala, Hammer, these like squishy backline heroes that although they are auto attack damage, they can't dive efficiently. And you can still take uh, Superstition even if they have one of those heroes like Vala or Hammer um, because while you are worse against auto attacks, if you position properly um, and just always stay away from them and don't take auto attacks, they can't really abuse the fact that you have Superstition that much. Um, now that being said, that that is kind of situational, but yeah, I, I personally think there's a big distinction between auto attack heroes that can dive you and can't dive you when you're taking this talent, so keep those in mind as well. So yeah, I mean, even if it's just magic damage, all magic damage comp and a Vala or something, I think Superstition is still viable because the Vala herself can't dive you, and if she can't dive you, then you know, you're fine taking Superstition. Um, the other viable talent here is Ice Block. Don't need to talk too much about Ice Block. It's just really good on pretty much every single hero. You know, Ice Block when you're in trouble. Ice Block when someone's diving you. Um, I'm gonna take Ice Block here as the most default choice, but uh, you know, every game just look at the comp and if it is mostly magic damage slash non dive auto damage, Superstition always a really strong tech choice. Um, yeah, basically makes Nazebo like a new brack in terms of how hard it is to kill with spell damage. Yeah. Level 16, we're just going to take Spider Colony. It's by far the best. Once again, synergizes with all your spider talents. Makes uh, basically your cooldown for a Q goes down to about four seconds, four and a half seconds instead of nine, which is very, very good. Um, you can throw out Qs all day long, and your Qs do an absolute ton of damage, especially towards the late game. Um, some other talent that are picked at this level. So a lot of people like Ring of Poison, but like look look at level 20, Ring of Poison does 700 damage over 4 seconds if you hit someone. Um, why is that not as good as Spider Colony? Well, because you're taking into all spiders here, let's just look at the damage here. Um, okay, so when you when you hit when you hit a single spider, it's 1.6k damage, right? That's a lot more than 700. And like I said, you can potentially do half of that damage if the target is moving. Um, so I would say a more accurate approximate approximate would be um, what 800 to 1.6k, somewhere in that range of damage. Um, so that still totally outclasses Ring of Poison. Not to mention when you take this, it's 800 to 600. Uh, or it's 800 to 1600 extra damage um, on a 4.5 second cooldown. If you take this, it's um, you know 700 damage on a 14 second cooldown. So just pure numbers wise, Q build, yeah, Spider Colony is the way to go. Uh, I'm not gonna talk too much about Soul Harvest. Um, 
I just think it's not good enough. Even if you even if you do the math for the ability power, it's just not going to add up to the same number of damage the spider colony gives you because you're specking into all Q here. Um, even if you get the maximum of 25%, just nowhere close to this. So, yep, level 20, we're going to go for almost always vial infection unless you're playing nocebo on like BO, boe or something and by level 20 you're, you're you're at like 100 stacks or something you're just nowhere close to 150 stacks if that's the case then you can take the ulti upgrade um because obviously if if you're not going to make if you're not going to finish this quest it's not going to do anything but the vast majority of the time the, the main reason why Nazebo is even picked in competitive is because of this talent. Because if you can get to level 20, uh, Nazebo is basically the strongest hero in the game due to Vile Infection. Um, you know, it basically doubles your passive damage and applies it to heroes. And look, looking at your passive damage here, you take... Um, 145 additional damage over six seconds you double that um you add that with the spiders it's just it's just an absolutely insane amount of damage added um and it's basically applied to anything any of your abilities touch so this is just spread across the whole enemy team um actually pretty much yeah vile infection just almost always take it, it makes nazebo the strongest hero in the game that's why nazebo is a level 20 hero and this is basically the most default build. Uh, once again, you can take different talents at 13, different talents at 4 if you need to tech for them. But overall, this is the talent build. And uh, yeah, pretty straightforward. Hopefully, uh, went through all the talents that you might take and why you should or shouldn't take them. Um, yeah, but other than that, hope you guys enjoyed this video. That's it for me for today. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to um, follow this channel if you enjoyed it. Um, yeah, that's about it. You can also follow me on Twitter at FanHots if you enjoyed the video uh, and want to see more. I tweet a lot about my videos and streams and stuff. But other than that, I'm done for today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.